When people talk about Africa's most important post-independence leaders, they often forget to mention one man. But Kenneth Kaunda deserves more than a mention. He was a president of Zambia between 1964 and 1991, and his leadership was decisive in liberating Southern Africa. Zambia broke free from British colonialism in 1964. It was one of the earliest countries in the region to do so. This was obviously a good thing, but it was also a challenge, as the young nation was surrounded by hostile white minority governments. Kaunda had two options. One, make life easy for himself by cooperating with the colonial regimes next door, but thereby betraying his African brothers. Or two, risk the wrath of those regimes by supporting liberation movements across the border. Kaunda chose the tough but principled stance. He committed himself to helping free the entire Southern African region. He provided financial and material support to all surrounding liberation movements. Zambia became a hub for freedom fighters in Southern Africa. The Kaunda-led government hosted the headquarters, military bases, and training camps of liberation movements from Southern Rhodesia, Namibia, Mozambique, South Africa, and Angola. Zambia also led the diplomatic offensive against the oppressive colonial governments at international forums such as the United Nations General Assembly. We are aware of the maneuvers by certain reactionary forces, whatever their motives, calculated to undermine recent progressive changes towards the attainment of independence in Angola and Mozambique. We view with dismay, for example, the ill-fated attempts by a band of white reactionary settlers in Mozambique who resorted to disorder and violence designed to frustrate the popular course of events towards independence. We are at the same time, however, confident that these shameful maneuvers by a band of settler desperados will be completely liquidated. In this regard, we condemn the amassing of troops by the racist and minority regimes of South Africa and Rhodesia along the border with Mozambique. This support came at a high human and economic cost. The country was heavily bombed by Southern Rhodesian and South African forces. The Rhodesian government also closed its border with Zambia, a key route for Zambian copper exports. This was disastrous for Zambia's economy, as copper exports accounted for over 75% of government revenue. These ploys were meant to pressure Kaunda into ending his support for the reparation movements, but instead, they only strengthened his resolve. We must expose Ian Smith for what he is, an ostrich head in the sand before the eyes of the world. We must isolate and completely isolate him and completely strengthen the fighting capacity and effectiveness of the nationalist guerrillas. We are there for Mr. Speaker, ready to continue our contribution in Geneva to support the nationalists to achieve their objectives and restore peace and order on the basis of majority rule in Zimbabwe. We are in a completely new era, an era in which, as I have so often declared, African nationalism, African nationalism is sweeping this part of the world like a storm reducing trouble the colonial and racist structures in its path. I have therefore, I have therefore great confidence in the future of Southern Africa. Despite the difficulties, Kaunda's efforts paid off. By the time he left office in 1991, the entire region, except South Africa, had been liberated. He'd also helped set in motion negotiations for the end of apartheid in South Africa. The first in-person talks between the apartheid regime and the African National Congress were hosted by the Zambian government. The talks ultimately led to the unbanning of the ANC and the release of political prisoners, including key players such as Nelson Mandela, Ota Sisulu, and Ahmed Katranda. Zambia was the first country that Mandela visited after leaving prison. This was in recognition of the country's immense contribution to the fight against apartheid. Kaunda claimed he was not driven by personal glory, but by his Pan-African principles and ideals. In light of just how much he achieved for the cause, he definitely deserves greater recognition and indeed glory. 